Us now is Dr. Robert Murphy. He is a professor of infectious diseases at Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine. Good morning. Good morning. Um, what difference will the Defense Production Act make in using FEMA? How long will it take to get these things going? What will they accomplish that hasn't been able to get accomplished? Yeah, uh, they're going to put uh, kind of a, a, a layer of organization on top of everything uh, from when the vaccine gets to the distribution centers till it gets out into the places where it's going to be used. So it's it's a big step in the right direction. And states that don't have the personnel, uh, they can't ramp up fast enough. You know, there's going to be 10,000 of these FEMA workers uh, that are going to be assisting. So this is uh, really good news. Uh, what about this new variant? There's supposedly a rare complication in children. Yeah, the, uh, the complication in children has been around for a while. It's this MIS syndrome, multi-system uh, inflammatory syndrome. So what's different about this variant? Well, the vari well there, there have been some case reports that this MIS uh, has, they're see they think they're seeing more of it. We uh -huh. don't know if they really are or not because there's just so much COVID around. So there's only 1,600 cases approximately in the United States right now of MIS. But, you know, we're looking at, or the CDC is looking at that very closely. And, and they want the doctors to be reporting this uh, to the public health authorities so we can figure out how much there is. What are your thoughts on indoor dining and sports? Well, indoor dining is loosening up. But uh, indoor dining and, and, indoor, and bars are the places where you can really uh, spread easel, the easiest. Contact sports, contact indoor sports uh, are also very high risk. And, uh, you know, I mean, if the numbers are going down, it's, you know, we can uh, watch it very closely. Uh, but if they start going up, that's going to have to be shut down again. I know we talked about this yesterday, but it's in the news again today, this worry about pregnant women getting the vaccine. Can you reiterate what you said, if it's dangerous or not? Yeah, no, the... There was a WHO report recommending uh, against using the Moderna vaccine, but they didn't say why, and uh, still nobody knows. Vaccines were never, uh, vac uh, women who were pregnant were never uh, allowed into the vaccine studies. Now some women uh, that had taken the first dose of the vaccine did get pregnant and didn't have any uh, trouble, but it's really only a handful. So it's, uh, it's uh, considered a personal decision between the doctor and the the pregnant woman certainly pregnant women do do badly with COVID. So it's it's a uh, you have to weigh the benefit benefits worse versus the risk. Now other vaccines are given to pregnant women and they do okay. So it remains to be seen. All right, viewer questions. We were told the actual cases were likely ten times the reported COVID nineteen cases. So does that mean instead of twenty five million cases, it's two hundred and fifty million? With that, haven't we reached herd immunity? Uh, Boy, I wish we had, but uh, what happened was when, when those statistics were made, uh, there was very little testing going on. And that's why so many people never got diagnosed. If you look at the serology studies, like we did here in Illinois, uh, about the highest uh, that uh, it uh, 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 measures is about 20%, 20% of the people uh, being infected. So it's nowhere near herd immunity. Okay, next question. Why is age group 60 to 64 not included in phase 1C? We are considered at higher risk, but have been put in general population after all essential workers ages 16 to 64 with underlying health risks. Yeah, so 16 to 64 with an underlying health risk is much more fatal uh, than 16 to 64 uh, without an underlying risk. So that's really why. I mean, ideally, everyone should be getting the vaccine. But, you know, we don't have enough vaccines. So uh, what uh, we're trying to do is get the people who have underlying risk, who are likely to die from this uh, horrible disease, and the frontline workers so that they, they don't get it, so they don't keep spreading it in their communities. All right, last question. My 94-year-old mother is housebound. Is there a plan to get vaccines in the home? Well, I haven't seen it, uh, but uh, this is, uh, is a big issue because a lot of, especially in the winter time when it's so difficult to get around, um, you know, maybe these 10,000 FEMA workers, uh, some of them can be put into some kind of uh, home uh, vaccine delivery. Remember, it's not just like they come in, give you the shot and leave. They've got to stay around for at least 15 minutes, uh, you know, after somebody gets a shot. And if they have any history of allergies, you have to stay around for 30 minutes. So it's not anything that's going to happen quickly. 
But it's a very important problem because otherwise these people are not going to get vaccinated. So there has to be a plan. And of course, that's going to be left up to the 50 states and six territories. And so that you're going to have 56 different plans. It's an important uh, point, though. All right, Dr. Murphy, thanks for being with us. If you have a question for the doctor, he'll be with us tomorrow at this time. You can post your questions on our Morning News Facebook page. Have a good day. Okay, have a great day. Thanks, doctor. Hey, Paul. Hi, you guys. Sunshine.